comes, ladies and gentlemen, the Bromo Seltzer Special. Bringing you radio's most thrilling mystery drama, The Adventures of Ellery Queen. Tonight, the makers of Bromo Seltzer bring you another thrilling adventure with Ellery Queen, the celebrated gentleman detective in person. Ellery Queen invites you to match wits with him as he relates another story of a crime he alone unravels. Before revealing the solution, he stops the play, gives you a chance to solve the mystery. Our guest armchair detectives for this evening are film star Miss Jean Cagney and Mr. Peter Cusack, executive secretary of the National Foundation for Infantile Paralysis. And now, Ellery Queen, master detective and your host for the next half hour. Thank you, Ernest Chappell, and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Tonight, I'm going to tell you about the exotic adventure of the Scarecrow and the Snowman. One July morning, some years before the war, Dad, Nicky, Sergeant Bealey, and I were driving to the rich farm country of the Midwest. Suddenly, we rounded a curve and saw a red barn and a big clabbered farmhouse shaded by elm trees. Sergeant, stop. Uh, what farm, Maestro? We're in the middle of no place. I want to take color movies of this farm. Huh? You and your movie camera, Ellery. Can I shout that scarecrow over there in the cornfield, son? Oh, swell, Dad. So that's a scarecrow. What do you know? Get that farm in the picture, son. There, Ellery, see? Walking toward the scarecrow. Yes, very nice. Wait a minute. Something's wrong. Yeah. What's he yelling at? Us? Yelling for help, Nicky. Oh, Come on, let's get over there. Uh. Hey, farmer. What's the matter? What's wrong? Why, he's the color of death. It's bleeding. It's bleeding. What's bleeding? Huh. Scarecrow. That scarecrow? It is bleeding. Them rags. That's so kitty. That's our regular scarecrow. And how could a scarecrow bleed? Because it's not a scarecrow yet, Clark. It's a man dressed in the scarecrow's duds. Let's get him off this pole. Right. Okay. I got He's it. been tied to the stake by his belt. Well, how the old fire tarnation did he get here? Don't you know? Oh, easy now. Yeah, that's it, Dad. Badly wounded, Ellery. Unconscious. Hey, you, farmer. Uh, what's this farm? Who are you? This is the Mayfield Police. I'm Josh Bullen. I run the police for old man Mayfield. Where's the nearest doctor, Mr. Bullen? Dairyville Hospital, six, seven miles from here. We'll have to rush in there. Come on, Dad. It's going to be a race with death. That country doctor is certainly taking his time in there. Just how was the man hurt, Inspector? Stabbed twice in the chest, Nicky. I wonder who he is. Not an identifying mark on him. Yes, quite a mystery. Mr. Bullen. Yes, Mr. Who Bullen. lives on the Mayfield farm beside yourself? Well, now, there's me and my wife, Josie Mayfield. We've been married four years now, and Josie's pa, old man Mayfield. It's really his place, but well, I run it for him. Don't tell me there's no Ma Mayfield, Mr. Bullen. <laughs> it sure is, Miss Porter. Josie's Ma, my mother-in-law. Wonderful woman. Cooks, keeps house, helps out in the fields. Strong as a plowman, Ma Mayfield is. I sort of wish Josie took after her, Ma. Your wife, Mr. Bullen, what's wrong with her? Uh, Josie's been sickly, Mr. Queen. Ever since our baby died. Stays a bed most times. Ain't got the strength to crawl downstairs near. Who oh, say, here's Doc Jenkins. How's your patient? Well, he pulled through, Dr. Jenkins. Yes, he will. Must be made of iron. I- I'd like to talk to him, Doctor. Can't now, Mr. Queen. He's unconscious. Say, Josh, who is he, do you know? Durned if I do, Doc. Never seen him before. Me neither. Huh. Thought he knew everyone in the county, too. Doctor, I'd like to photograph your patient. I know it. Take his picture? Well, I imagine you'll have to get the sheriff's permission. But it's attempted murder. Henry, take your photo. And, Doctor, no one's to see or talk to the victim till we can question him. All right. Please notify us at the local hotel the moment he regains consciousness. Yeah. <laughs> There, ladies and gentlemen, you have the beginning of our mystery. We'll be back in just a moment to tell you more. But first, Ernest Chappell. Maybe you think you've got a tough job. Yeah, but Mr. Willis C. Latchaw of Spring City, Pennsylvania, has a job that really puts the pressure on. Here's what he writes. I'm one of the guards in an important aircraft engine company. We've got to see that nothing and nobody gets into our plant who's not supposed to. Picture us on a 12-hour watch, every nerve tense, ready for anything that might happen, when up pops one of those pesky headaches. The boys on my shift know how to handle that, though. We make a beeline for the plant dispensary or first aid station for our old friend, Bromo Seltzer. We found there's nothing better for quick relief from headache and jittery nerves. And you're right, Mr. Willis. Bromo Seltzer fights headache three ways. Helps you feel a lot better, fast. 
So the next time you've got a common sick headache, friends, try Bromo Seltzer, won't you? Then write and tell us your own experience. Just address your letter to Ellery Queen in care of the station to which you are listening. And now back to our story. Ellery has photographed the mysterious scarecrow man and had the photo developed. Now, several hours later, the Queens are driving Josh Bullen back to the Mayfield farm. Henry, think someone in the Mayfield place carved that fellow up? I don't know, Dad. Keep your eyes open. Well, here we are. Whew. It is hot. Man, what I'd give for a sidle of beer. Beer? I'll get more Mayfield to fix you the finest drink of ginger beer you ever tasted. <laughs> what crazy? Oh, who's that crazy-looking old man on the porch? What's he waving that shotgun at us for? It's all right, Pa. I know these folks. Don't get scared. That's just my father. Uh, Mr. Mayfield, if you'll put that shotgun down... I know if you've got it ten minutes, I'll clap dice on you. Stand where you be. Oh, this ain't Jonathan. It's Mr. Queen. It's two Jonathan Dice. You, boy, Mr. Cuts, the punky day. Hey, the old squirrel ain't kidding. You won't stay there, eh? He's going to shoot. Henry, Jack, come on. Get behind the car, all of you. All right, I warned you. Shooting. Yeah. Hey, Ma, Ma. For heaven's sake, Mr. Bullen, who does he think I am? Who, who's Jonathan? My wife's brother, old man Mayfield's son. Ma! Who's the shooting? Land of mercy, Paul, you give me that gun. Yeah, Ma, I'm going to shoot Jonathan Gay. You are going to march up to the attic to your room, Paul Mayfield. No, I'm not. I'm... Oh, Sorry. The lady's okay. See the way she took that gun away from the old bazook? Sorry as all get out, folks. You see, Jonathan Mayfield got into a heap of trouble, and his pa said he'd kill him if he ever showed his face around the farm again. Old man's out of his head. Why don't you put him away, Bullen? Ma won't hear of it, Inspector. Besides, pa's quiet most times. Come on into the house. Ma, is that you? Yes, George. Well, pa's all right now. Come in. Come on in. Thank you, folks. Ma, uh, these folks are fretting for some of your extra special ginger beer. Josh, you take them into the parlor, and I'll be right in with a big pitcher. Just make yourselves right to home, folks. Now, this way, folks. Thank you. <laughs> what? Why, Josie. Josh? Oh, hello. Downstairs, Josie? Well, sitting in the parlor all by yourself. Folks, this is my wife, Josie Mayfield Bullock. Hi, Mr. Bullock. Oh, I'm so glad. It's so very nice having you. Well, sit down. Sit down, folks. Yeah, Thanks. I guess you will. My, Josie talks mighty fine, eh? Had two years of state college, Josie did. This girl is so pretty. Are you married? Why, why no, I'm not. I am. I had a baby once. It was the cutest baby. She had blue eyes and the softest blonde hair. Now, now, Josie, you know we don't talk about the baby. Ma, where's that ginger beer? Come in, Josh, come in. Well, what's everybody so quiet for? Josie, have you been talking about the baby again? It was a girl, Ma. Remember? Oh, this sweetest little girl. This place gives now, me the cheapest inspector. Not all, not this girl here. Henry, show him that photo when that's beating. Uh, come on, folks, now. Come on, try some of this. Oh, oh right. just right. here, right. Mayfield. There you oh, are. by the this... way, uh, do you recognize the man in this photograph? Uh, this fella? Mm-hmm. Hmm. Nope, can't say as I do. Josie, drink? No, thanks, Mom. I was going to name my baby Mary Ellen, you know. Ellery, please. Let's go. We're talking to folders now. Here's one of Jonathan, Josie's brother. Josh, you put that album away. Uh, please, may I see it, Mr. Bullen? Sure. Dad, come over here. Uh, here, Miss. Can I give you some juice to be? It's not the wounded man, Dad. Nope. No resemblance to the stranger at all. What do you say we go? No, Dad. We're staying in Derryville till I find out who that scarecrow man is and who tried to murder him. Finally, three days later, Dr. Jenkins said we could question the stranger. But when we went to the man's room at the hospital, we found that he'd escaped through a window. It was Ellery hopping. The scarecrow man gone, and we still didn't know who he was or who had tried to murder him. Well, we hung around trying to find someone who recognized the scarecrow man from Ellery's picture of him, but no one knew him, so we gave up. 
Six months later, January it was, we got a letter from the dairy of the Justice of the Peace, an old fellow named Clem Hunter. Hunter confessed that he lied about not recognizing the stranger and he wanted to clear his conscience. He wrote us, You certainly won't find it out from anybody else, because me and the town clerk, who's dead, were the only ones who knew who this fellow was. If you'll come see me, I'll tell you the whole story. <laughs> Two days before we got back to Derryville, old Clem Hunter up and kicked the bucket. Pneumonia. Boy, you should have seen the maestro. Our last hope of solving the mystery six feet under. But the maestro says, now that we're here, I'm not going back to New York without taking another whack at the Mayfield. Well, we drive over to the Mayfield farm in practically a blizzard. The roads were so bad, Ma Mayfield makes us stay overnight. Late that same afternoon, the storm subsided a bit, and Ellie and I went outside to find Josh Bullen hammering away at a thick pole driven into the frozen earth right off the porch. Hi, Mr. Bullen. What are you doing? <laughs> Making a snowman, Mr. Queen. A snowman? That's steady enough, I reckon. Now to pack more snow around. Oh, may I help, Mr. Bullen? Sure thing, Miss Porter. Pitch right in. Oh, by George, that looks like fun. Uh, move over, Nicky. Now, hurry, I have to hurry. <laughs> Uh, seeing this pole, Josh, stuck in the ground this way... Sort of reminds you of the fellow we found hanging in the cornfield last summer, don't we? Yes. Ever hear anything more about him after he escaped from the Derryville Hospital, Josh? Nary word. See, this has come along fine. You make his head, Miss Porter. Oh, fine. Hope Josie likes him. She's watching from her bedroom window up there. Hi, Josie. Like it, Mrs. B? Oh, Josh, you love it. Well, wait, he ain't finished. He still needs eyes, nose, and a mouth. And a pipe, Josh. Take a pipe in his mouth. Oh, how my baby would have loved him. Baby? Don't be no mind, folks. Sure, Josie. Pipe it is. Yes, who ever heard of a snowman without a pipe? A corn cob, Josh. Yeah, got to have a corn cob. Oh, blame it, I left my cob up in my bedroom this morning. Of course, Paul Mayfield's got a raft of them. Keeps all his cobs up in that attic room of his. But I guess we better not bother Paul. Might start shooting at you for Jonathan again, eh, Mr. Queen? <laughs> yeah. Oh, but gee, here's that other corn cob of mine right here in my jeans. Forgot all about the second one. There, Josie, how's he look? Oh, you look a snowman with that pipe, Oh, hi, Inspector Sergeant. Look at this. Hey, that's some production. <laughs> a snowman. Uh, where's the maestro? Oh, he what? It was right here a second ago. Here I am, Nicky. Oh. oh. Him and his movie camera. <laughs> yes, Sergeant. I remembered it was in the car. Going to take movies of this snowman, son? <laughs> Dad, you're a mind reader. The door of this iceberg they call a bedroom. Climb it a bit, son. See who it is. Uh, oh, it must be ten below zero in here. Yes, who is it? Sorry. It's me. Oh, Nicky crying. It's me. Oh, wait, Nicky. Oh, oh. oh, coming. I just saw it. Saw what, Nicky? Nicky Annie. Why are you crying? I. I couldn't sleep. I got up and. And look out my bedroom window at the snowman in the front yard. And... <laughs> Nicky, stop. What did you see? The snowman. He's bleeding. That's noisy. You want to wake the others? Okay, Inspector. There. There you see? A red brown stain all over the snowman's chest. Henry, what in thunderation do you think you're doing? Photographing a snowman, Dad. Uh, lucky this moonlight's so bright. Now, let's have a look. Well, if that ain't blood, real blood, I'll turn in my badge. Somebody's idea of a joke. Nicky, go back to bed. Oh, no. Hey, I... Go on, go on, Nicky. Uh... 
It's all right, Inspector. Joke, then. Some joke. My story. It's a dead man under this snowman. I thought so. Step to the pole by his belt? Yeah. Just like that scarecrow guy last summer. Two ugly stab wounds in his chest, son. Uh, brush the snow off from around his head, Sergeant. Yeah. Oh, oh, it's the same guy. The man who escaped from the Dairyville Hospital. The scarecrow man. <laughs> Really back. He'll freeze as hard as this corpse in the front yard here. Again, all identification marks gone dratted. How long do you figure he's been dead? Well, I'd say since late last night, son. Yes, about the time the snow stopped. We slept through the whole thing. Feely. Yeah, Spencer? Mushing from Nome? Well, what'd you find out? Where's the single set of tracks leading up to the snowman come from? The Mayfield barn, Inspector. Blood in there. And signs of a fight. Murdered in the barn, huh? And the killer carried the dead man to this spot, knocked down Josh Bullen's snowman, slung the corpse to the pole with his own belt, and rebuilt a snowman around it. Why do you suppose he did that now, my strong? To delay discovery of the crime, Sergeant, the killer was afraid of us. By the time the snow melted, we'd long since have left the neighborhood. It would have too if the dead man's blood had been soaked through the snow. Really, was there any clue in the barn to the killer? Uh, I looked my eyes out, Inspector. No dice. And these tracks don't tell us anything... Killer wore huge galoshes. Could have been anyone. But aren't there any other tracks, really, to show where the killer came from or which way he went? Nary a track. Anywhere's on the Mayfield property. Dad, that means the victim came to the barn during the snowstorm, as did his murderer. Then more snow fell and wiped out all the tracks they'd made. So by the time the killer lugged his victim's body from the barn to the front yard here, all he left was this one set of tracks. Hey, wife. Then where are the killer's tracks escaping from the yard here after he put the body in the snowman? There ain't no escaping tracks. Sergeant, you've hit it. The only place the killer could have escaped to without leaving further tracks in the snow is up onto the porch of the Mayfield farmhouse here. Say, uh, yeah. He could have made it from the snowman to the porch in one big step. But, Eddie, that means the killer is one of the people in this farmhouse. Yes, Dad. At last we know the stranger was murdered by one of the Mayfield tribe. So let's wake him up and find out which one. <laughs> to work on the Mayfields. We might just as well have saved our breath. They all claimed they didn't know a thing about the corpse and the snowman. So we turned the whole mess over to the local sheriff and headed for home. I don't like to remember every the next few weeks. Here it is. Snap your head off for a look. Haul out his reels of movie film that he shot on our two trips to Dairyville and run them over and over. So anyway, one night, he was showing his shots of the bloodstained snowman when... Nicky, stop the machine. Sergeant, put the lights on. Yeah. Why the excitement, sir? Oh, what corpse? Now I know who killed that man. You, but... you know who killed him? But, maestro, we don't even know who he was. You mean the victim? Yeah. Well, I've known that for some time. What? You have? Not his name, of course. But it wasn't the victim's identity which held me up. It was his killer's identity. And now you know that, too? But how can you, Ellery? All you've done is run the snowman movies. They're what told me, Nicky. Didn't you notice a difference between the Josh Bullen snowman and the snowman the killer built around the corpse? No. no. The snow at the base of the killer's snowman had been shoveled up. Don't you see? After concealing the body inside the snowman, the killer then began poking in the snow at its feet with a shovel. He'd lost something in the snow and was looking for it. But what else? My films even answer that. There's an object in the shots of the original snowman that's missing from the shots of the made-over snowman. Something missing? What, Marshal? Josh Bullen's corn cob pipe. Hey, that's right. When we found the made over snowman with the corpse inside, the pipe wasn't there. Exactly. The killer dropped the pipe accidentally and shoveled frantically around trying to find it. He never did find it. Otherwise, he'd have stuck it back in the snowman's mouth. Yeah. So we'd think it was still the same snowman and not get suspicious and find the body. That's all very well, Mr. Queen. But what's the missing corn cob got to do with the killer of the stranger? The missing corn cob, Nicky, tells me who the killer was. Well, ladies and gentlemen, there you have the mystery of the scarecrow and the snowman. Have you puzzled it out yet? Well, let's compare solutions with our guest armchair detective. Nikki, will you introduce our guest, please? 
Well, Ellery, our first guest tonight is Miss Jean Cagney, the famous screen star and sister of Jimmy Cagney. Our second guest is Mr. Peter Cusack, Executive Secretary of the National Foundation for Infantile Paralysis. All right, Ellery. Thank you, Nikki. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to take a moment here to remind you that the March of Dimes to fight infantile paralysis is on right now. Won't you help protect America's children from this dread disease by sending your dimes and dollars, as much as you can afford, to President Roosevelt, Washington, D.C.? Thank you. And now, Miss Cagney, who is the murderer? I'd say it was Ma Mayfield. Have you any reason? Well, I would suspect that Ma Mayfield wouldn't have a second pipe on hand. Mm -hmm. And uh, also, I think she'd be strong enough to be able to commit the crime and to reconstruct the snowman. Thank you, Miss Cagney. And Mr. Cusack. Who do you think the murderer is? Oh, I think the murderer was Josh, <clears throat> Josh Mayfield, Ellery. Oh, why do you think that? I don't know what his motive was, but the uh, the clue of the uh, missing corn cob pipe uh, makes me feel that it was he because he referred to the fact that uh, that Pa Mayfield had this uh, collection, and uh, Pa Mayfield being very fussy and irritable, I would think that Josh would not want to lose the pipe. You mean Josh Bullen, the husband of Josie Mayfield. Excuse yes. me. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Cusack and Miss Cackney. We'll let you know in just a moment whether you've hit the solution to our mystery. But first, here's Ernest Chappell, who can't seem to get his mind off sabotage. Well, and it is sabotage when a common sick headache makes you lose out on work or pleasure. You can't do a first-class job or enjoy your fun when you've got pounding head pains, plus the upset stomach and jittery nerves that may accompany a common sick headache. And that's why I say the next time you're feeling miserable with a headache, step up to the nearest drugstore fountain and ask for a Bromo Seltzer. Now, ten cents is all it costs to try Bromo Seltzer. And once you experience the quick, effective relief it gives, you'll want to get a bottle for your home medicine chest. that dead stranger was. Well, Dad, remember your mentioning that we got a letter from the Derryville Justice of the Peace? Sam Munder, who wrote saying that he knew who this stranger was? Yes. Now, what could a Justice of the Peace and a town clerk know that other members of a rural community might not know? Well, what do we usually associate with Justices of the Peace? Marriages. He performs it. Yes. And marriages also involve a town clerk, who probably issues a license and certainly records the marriage in the town roll. So you figured the stranger had been married in Derryville years before. Right. But who else would know of the stranger's marriage? Only the Mayfields, because the killer is one of them. So we must ask, what woman at the Mayfield farm was of marriageable age? Only one. Josie, the daughter. Josie's married to Josh Bullen. Conclusion, Josie and the stranger have been married before Josie's marriage to Josh Bullen. A secret marriage, because no one in Derryville was able to recognize the stranger from that photo I took of him at the hospital last summer. So it was reasonable to conclude that one of the Mayfield tribe had killed the stranger to keep his secret marriage to Josie from becoming public knowledge. Josie and the stranger elope with something. Old man Mayfield finds out and either drives the man away or buys him off. There's been something pretty raw about the man that the Mayfields couldn't stomach. So when they thought Josie's husband would never turn up again, Josie never bothered to get a divorce. And when Josie married Josh Bullen, she committed bigamy. Yes. Well, the husband did turn up again last July, probably with demand for more money, which the Mayfields couldn't or wouldn't meet. So one of the family stabbed him early that Sunday morning and hid the body in the cornfield scarecrow till it could be disposed of permanently at nightfall. But we came along during the day, found the stranger still alive, took him to the hospital, and he escaped. And the one who knew Josie's bigamous secret was loose again. Then why did he come back in January? We'll, we'll never know exactly, Sergeant. Anyway, the same Mayfield murdered him for keeps this time and hid the body in the snowman so that we'd fail to discover the crime and leave. But who is the killer, son? How do you know? The missing corn cob pipe tells me, Dad. The corn corn cob pipe? We know the killer wanted a corn cob and hadn't located the one he'd lost in the deep snow. Because if he had found it, he'd have stuck it back in the snowman's mouth. And he didn't. That fact clears Josh Bullen and old Pa Mayfield. Clears Bullen and his father-in-law? How so, son? Because either man could easily have got another corn cob to stick into the snowman's mouth, Dad. How do you figure that out, Ellen? Well, we know that Josh Bullen had a second corn cob up in his bedroom. And we also know that Pa Mayfield kept his corn cobs in his attic room. Either man could have procured a corn cob to replace the lost one merely by stealing up to his own room in the middle of the night while the rest of us were asleep. 
Since the killer didn't replace the lost pipe, it means he didn't have one to replace it with and couldn't get another from his own room. But, Maestro, that leaves only... The two women of the house. Precisely. Could the murderer have been Josie, Josh's wife? No. It was a man-sized job to carry the dead body from the barn to the front yard, demolish the original snowman, tie the corpse to the pole, and build a new snowman around it. Josie is an invalid, bedridden most of the time. So Josie couldn't possibly have done it. The old lady. Yes, Sergeant. Ma Mayfield. Did Ma Mayfield have the strength to commit both these strenuous crimes? Oh, yes. Josh told us she even helped with the farming. In fact, Josh said she was as strong as a plow mare. Yes, Ma Mayfield killed her daughter's husband to protect Josie's reputation in that rural community and save what was left of the poor girl's life. <laughs> the solution to the mystery. I want to thank Miss Cagney and Mr. Cusack for appearing as guest armchair detectives this evening. We want especially to compliment Miss Cagney on her skill in solving the crime. We have for both Miss Cagney and Mr. Cusack a personal gift from Bromo Seltzer, also an autographed copy of my latest mystery anthology, The Female of the Species, and a subscription to Ellery Queen's Mystery Magazine. While we're waiting for Ellery to tell us something about next week's mystery... Come on there. Swing aboard our famous talking train. Right ahead, Three ways. <laughs> now, you couldn't ask for better advice than that. Fight headache three ways with Bromo Seltzer. Your own experience will tell you it isn't always just the pounding in your head that makes you feel so miserable. It's also the upset stomach and the jumpy nerves that may accompany the headache. And that's why we say, for that kind of three-way misery, take a Bromo Seltzer. Remember, it fights common sick headache these three ways. Bromo Seltzer quickly relieves headache pain. Bromo Seltzer helps settle upset stomach. Bromo Seltzer helps calm jumpy nerves. Now, you can take Bromo Seltzer while it's still fizzing or after it settles down. Use it only as directed on the label. For persistent or recurring headaches, see your doctor. But when it's a common sick headache that's got you down, take this tip from our educated train. And now, Ellery, let's hear about next week. Well, ladies and gentlemen, next week we tell you a ghost story. Yes, a ghost story with a real ghost that seems immune to bullets. Don't miss next week, Adventure of the Family Ghost. Our guests will be Martha Scott and Mark Conway. <laughs> And don't forget the other great Romo Seltzer show friends, Vox Pop, the show that travels America. Next Monday, Vox Pop takes you to the Winchester Repeating Arms Company at New Haven, Connecticut. Consult your local paper for the time and station. Music for the Adventures of Ellery Queen is by Charles Paul. This is Ernest Chappell reminding you to catch the Romo Seltzer special again next week. Same time, same station. Fight ahead, This is the National Broadcasting Company.